So I, I forgot my drone. I usually bring all my cameras out there. I like to play around, get a lot of cool content, get a lot of cool memories. And usually I have my drone with me too. And that was one thing I was kicking myself in the butt for, for not bringing. But next time I will definitely bring it for sure. hundred percent. I, I saw the trip and I followed closely. Um, and it's just amazing. And then I got the walkthrough of, of the, the, yeah. the compound. Let's call it just that. Yeah, that's what it was. Easy. Amazing way to do it, man. It's it's the memories that you continue to make and continue to do. So, man, I'm glad. I mean, she must have loved that birthday. She did. She did. She just has a really good time on her birthdays. We usually do really cool things like that. But, you know, this one, like I said, this is one that definitely puts that mark a little bit higher from what we've done before. So it's just, you know, you just keep setting that bar and that standard higher and higher, man. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like, you know, definitely blessed, you know, to be able to do some of these different things. And a lot of hard work uh, goes into being able to do these things, you know, and I don't think people get that all the time, you know, at that point, they always, they just see the result and the, the glitz and glamor and all the nice stuff. But it's like, you have no idea how much hard work or especially what works getting done right now. It's just crazy. Cause oh, even out there, I was working. Yeah, you don't get a vacation like that unless you just crushed it. Right. Crushed it in life, man. So yes. I'm, I'm happy that you did. And I think uh, those are the kind of uh, trips that you just remember forever. I still remember this incredible yes. trip we had to Italy, and I will forever yes. remember it. So this is like, yes. makes me think this would be, oh, remember when we went? So yes. definitely. Beautiful one. And you definitely. did train. Yes. And again, for you people at home, just so you know, when he goes and – when John cheats, John doesn't cheat. John has the same, you know, the steak. Uh, yeah. He has fruit this time I saw. He has, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's all healthy, healthy. There's nothing. And something you told me was there was no fast food restaurants or Americanized restaurants, fast food there. None. It's one of the only islands I've ever been to where there's not. Because most islands usually have a KFC, a McDonald's. Or something of that nature, but usually it's KFC or McDonald's, and there was nothing. There's nothing on the island. They don't let it happen. They don't want it. They don't want infiltration of that in their island, which is really cool. And like I said, I liked all my meals home cooked, right, organically made if possible, as much as possible. So, you know, that's why you know having what we did was just awesome. Like I had my boiled eggs every day. I mean, my cheat for the vacation was French toast. I had three little pieces of French toast every morning. Oh, and, you uh, crazy man. I know, right? I went nuts. <laughs> uh, and then I, I had like, uh, I had some home cut fries, you know, that would do uh, at lunchtime and maybe dinner here or there. But, um, you know, that was really maybe some, maybe some home baked cookies in me, you know, but nothing crazy, you know, and it's just, it's, it's just really nuts. And it's funny because if you go and you eat anywhere outside the United States, anywhere, Mexico, Europe, anything, and I'm talking about going to McDonald's. The ingredient lists are different for each one of their products compared to the United States, compared to these places. Even in, let, let's say, Mexico and let's say London, right? Let's say England. So at that point, like, they don't allow high fructose corn syrup. Do you know how many products have high fructose corn syrup in the United States? I mean, I, don't, I, I couldn't even put a number on it. There's that many. Like anything you look at, from Oreos to juice drinks to pop to anything across the board. Anything that's sweet, they usually put that in. So that's one thing. And then we talk about like these different, you know, um, different things that are like you're in Gatorade, Doritos and stuff like that. Uh, their colorings is like red, 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 for, red 40. And um, there's another one, but those are not allowed in these different countries too as well. So it's just really crazy. Even if you look at like chips, like Doritos compared from there to here, like you look at the ingredient list, it's totally different. It's just really nuts how that works. So. I think the United States needs to, to look into to up in our nutrition factor. You know, I mean, I, we, we we take it for granted. We don't really have anything except in place that I think is effective and um, on point, right? Even our BMI scale is messed up. I think if you got in your BMI, have you gotten your BMI before? Yeah. So what do they tell you? Were you overweight or obese? One second. Yeah. One second. You're gonna you're gonna actually freak out on this one. They're going to tell you, like, you're obese. Because when we talk about BMI, so you guys know what we're talking about, body mass index. So the body mass index is the gold standard, per se, of what has came out from our government and the, the 
the beings above us, right? That are making these decisions. And uh, body mass index really depends on your height and weight. Oh, uh, well, that is true. All right. right. You have the basic, uh, well, not basic, but you have the Harvard Nutritional Book. Ah, yes, I like yeah. that. I like that. And, I like that. Um, in the Harvard book, and this has been since 2001, yeah. you have Mike O'Hearn. Oh, my God. They have you in there? <laughs> So this is the nutrition book that every kid, um, especially at Ivy League schools, will go through and very have to cool. understand this and test off of this. Very, you very truly cool. is the only individual that is put in the book, and it is off of the hypothetical of explaining how is my BMI, what it is, yep. how am I that size, yep. and not fat. Yeah. So it was, it was I think, a, a crazy cool thing that I'm in the all college books talking about the phenomenon of. The, yeah. Um, and it's been there. But going back to something, two, two folds. One is, yeah, BMI for you athletes. Get rid of it. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about BMI like that. Right. But the second thing is, I've seen it a lot on social media now. The discussion that you're talking about. What America will allow in foods yes. compared to what the rest of the world does. Yes. Um, and uh, I'm very much, I was raised um, in, in, in a martial arts type of upbringing. And yep. um, I know a bit about Asia and how they eat and how they do what they did um, with martial arts and with how they would eat. And it's amazing because of the fact that it's a very high rice yeah, it's carb driven and stuff, and very few overweight. Right. Very few uh, compared to America. And the way that they eat, uh, again, it's just clean eating. Um, not clean eating. It is is like how we would normally eat. Yeah. I hate saying clean eating because eating a meal to anybody and everybody, it seems as though nowadays, if it's not a pizza or a hamburger at a fast food restaurant, yeah. And you say, um, oh, to dinner, I'm having a, a salmon and sweet potatoes. Oh, you're on a diet. What are you talking about? Yeah. No, I have good nutritional principles, and this fits in where I need. That's a meal. It's like, how does mm. that? So yeah. going back to, you are impressive. Even <laughs> to you mentally, the French toast is a cheat. Of course, <laughs> you know it is. I mean, anybody says a French toast, I can't say, yeah, French toast is gonna be very beneficial for me, right? Like, no, come on, I'm eating carbs, I got sugar in there, you know. Now, I had some egg in there, and I could, I guess, I could be like, oh, I had the glass half full, half empty, I guess. But you know, as far as that goes, like, I know, like, that's not clean eating per se, or that's not a good nutritional diet to have every single day. Like, it, was, it would be like me just eating donuts every day. Like, if I eat one donut every day, it probably wouldn't kill me probably wouldn't kill you and then there's people that i think like like mona that has her um carbohydrates for breakfast it's either a bagel or it is something like that yeah and again she walks around what she does yeah, but yeah. the interesting thing is that with markers on the blood test you can find out through the uh, a1c yes on, on what's going on here. And then there's other factors that you can also, because you, you've you talked about this and really taught me about this, is that things go together. You can't just mm -hmm. go off the one marker. Hey, right. Your creatins are high. Well, why? Right. Well, right. Small breakdown. You're taking high protein or something. Right. There's other factors to that. So is there, with the A1C, so people can understand this a little bit better when they do their blood work, what is the ultimate goal that you would want to see there? And then what other factors come into play? Sure. If that makes sense. Sure. So hemoglobin A1C, you're going to want to be underneath like a 5.6. Okay. 5.6 is, is the borderline. 5.7, you're pre-diabetic. 5.7 to 6.0, you're pre-diabetic. Anything over 6.0. And it used to be 5.7 to 6.0 used to be type 2 diabetic. They moved the scale back. So now it's over 6.0. Now you're type 2 diabetic. So 
you obviously want to be underneath that 5.6 mark or at 5.6 at the very, very minimum. Right. And this will mean that, listen, you know, you're not pre-diabetic. You might need to change some things. Right. And this is going to give you that warning sim uh, signal like, hey, listen, you're right there. You better make some changes in the diet. Um, and, you know, people will do that. Right. To a certain extent. Or some people won't. If they keep continuing on that path and they keep eating a whole bunch of sugary things, drinking a whole bunch of sugary pop and just does not stop, they will keep rising. And what happens is, is, all right, you're like, all right, fine. There's more sugar in my bloodstream. Who cares? Right? What is that going to do to me? Right? Because I feel fine right now. I have my blood sugar is a little high. I feel fine. I, I'm performing great. Like I look great. Ha, ha, ha. And then you're like, all right, well. This is something that takes a, you know, a good amount of time to really start affecting, but it's going to really start affecting a lot of different ways. One, we talk about cellular deterioration. The more glucose, sugar that you have in your bloodstream, the more cellular deterioration happens. And if you got to you know, get a visual of what cellular deterioration is, this is a breakdown of your body of cells, right? So this is bad, obviously, for you. If you don't think this is bad, you need to take a look, look at it. The second thing is, you might be stacking on more weight because as we get these glucose levels higher and numbers higher, that's when insulin sensitivity and all these things start. The pancreas doesn't work correctly. So when you start introducing these sugars and stuff like that, insulin is not getting pushed out like it should be. And at that point, you're getting affected like that. And then when you become insulin resistant, then you're really fighting an uphill battle. And now you're not going to be losing the weight like you should be. And all these other things could be happening to you. So it really is, you know, getting a hold of your nutritional, and I'm not going to say diet, your nutritional plan of what you want to do and get that really situated. And what does that mean? That means that, listen, if you're drinking a whole bunch of sugary pop, you better cut it out. Any sugar you're drinking or eating, you better start looking at. And if you don't, you're going to be on a path of destruction for your body. And it might not happen in a week, a month, a year, but over time, you will start breaking down. Then you're going to have to start taking more medications to balance this too as well. The flip side to this, if you start losing weight, this can help re uh, reverse insulin resistance. It can help lower blood sugar levels too. But usually when people are losing weight, they're going on a calorie deficit and they're not eating as, many sh as much sugar. So right. at that point, it's all about getting your nutrition on point. If you can get the nutrition on point, you can start exercising and be active then at that point, you're going to start reversing some of these things. Today, I had to go with my dad at chemo. I go in every Tuesday. Go in there, and they always run a blood test on him every time. See where his potassium's at, his blood cell counts are at, his kidneys are at, and all these different things. Well, my dad's lost a substantial amount of weight. He's probably lost like 20, 25 pounds. He's down to probably about 185 to 190 per day. It just really depends, water, eating, whatever it is. But one thing that has improved because he's lost this weight is his kidney functions. They have actually improved even with chemo going on. Right. So it's kind of crazy. When I seen that today, I was like, holy shit. Like you really don't see like, you know, when your EGFR and your, your creatinine are real, real high and they stay like that for a long time, they usually, they really don't improve that much. They could stay stable, but mm, as far as improving, like it's real hard. So at that point, when, when I seen that today, I was like, holy, holy cow, like, this is another thing. And this is the biggest thing when I talk about GLP-1s, like semi-glutide, tears, epitide. You lose the weight, health is going to improve in other aspects and other areas. So it's the same thing with nutritional diet. You improve that, improve activity. It's going to change everything about how you're living. You improve your quality of life, your energy, your lean muscle, you're losing weight, you have more self-confidence. You're balling at that point. Like that, that to me is balling. Improving quality of life and having all these aspects there, that's what you want. And I talked about this earlier. I had a live right before yours. And we talked about obesity and overweight. How many people are out there obese and overweight? How many people have been obese and overweight ever since childhood? It's yeah. one thing when they grew up and they were skinny and then they got older and they started drinking and they had kids and just didn't take care of themselves. They'd been at one point, they'd been the sexy little figure. But the person that hasn't been is willing to go to any extreme almost to get that weight loss. Even yeah. if they say, I'm comfortable in my skin and I'm 400 pounds, you know damn well they want to lose that weight. I don't care what they say. And when they lose the weight, and most of those people end up going on weight loss programs. One, one, one uh, I don't know if you remember um, 
there was a little girl that was on TV. Uh, she had blonde hair. Um, God, I forgot her name. She was a real, she was a little brat. I, I forgot her name. Her, but her mom was Mama June, right? Okay. And her mom was all was like huge, huge. You used to see her now. She's down to like 130 pounds. I'm like, holy, you, can, you, you can't recognize it. Is that who it is? Honey Boo Boo? Honey Boo Boo. That's what it is. Good job, Jeff. I knew we, see, <laughs> Jeff's always there. I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, so Honey Boo Boo, that was it. So Mama June on there was always big, overweight, all these different things. Of course, she got some money and stuff like that. She probably had some surgical treatments. She probably had some weight loss medications. But the result is she looks phenomenal. I bet her health has improved too as well. So we show me before and after. Oh man, wait till you see. So I mean, just certain things like that. I mean, even Roseanne Barr. Remember how big Roseanne Barr used to be when she had Roseanne the show? Yeah. And how she is now? I mean, it's it's just like holy cow, this is like night and day. Like I just I can't believe it. So good for them. Huh? Good that they've dropped the weight. Absolutely. I Absolutely. And I love Roseanne. So, I, I, you know, <laughs> I mean, so it, it's, it's, it's really out there. And like, if people want to, people have the choice now yeah. to take their health into their own hands. They have enough sources like Titan and other sources out there where they can really get on programs. They can have people that are supporting them and really get them to where they want to go. So, you know, it, before it was like, listen, they were on watching TV all night. They're sitting in front of the TV. They got the pint of ice cream they're eating. They're watching the, the the commercials on TV talking about the shake weight and you know this diet, the Hollywood diet. On they're on the phone, they're ordering everything they possibly can. They get it, they try it, and it just didn't do anything for them. Now think about all the money they wasted. Yeah, I mean you're talking about. So I'm on my live. I was just on. We had a patient on there. He's been on Tears Epitide since April 17th. He's lost 47 pounds. He started at 437. He's going to go to 300 pounds. He's already on his way, dude. I'm like, that's just amazing. Kelly. Kelly. Tell Kelly. Look at this. That doesn't even look like she looked like she dropped weight and got 20 years younger. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, she might have had some, you know, some surgical treatments or Botox and stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe it, she didn't. She but looks the weight. Great. <laughs> she looks great. She looks, I mean, she, looks, you know, she, she, like I said, she looks like a different person. And, and this is what a lot of people can do. Daughter. That was the mother. That was the mother. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what the daughter looks like nowadays because she was a little, you know, rotund little girl, you know, right. she was on her way, you know, being overweight and stuff oh, like that. Footsteps. And, and it was more like, you know, I hate to even use the word, but they're kind of white trashish, you know what I'm saying? As far as that goes, that's how the show was. Um, but it was good, you know, right? I mean, it is what it is. And like I said, that's, that's you, great for her. See, she's overweight. She's yeah. overweight. So that's that's what the mom looked like. So, you know, and that's the other thing. Uh, then when we go into the kids, the obese and overweight kids, and now they're prescribing these GLP ones to these kids. Okay, so now they're going. But uh, before we go into the medication and how, how we can help this, is there other things? Because um, again, I, I I was reading so much, I get bombarded with all this information about yeah. A1C um, when it comes to elite athletes. So I'm just going to talk about, for just for a second about elite a, elite athletes. And most sure. of the studies that I was going off of was. Um, people that have high carbohydrates in their programs because of the fact that long distance. So most of the studies was on the, um, what's the bike racing tour de France, these kind of athletes, they do six hours a, a day of, uh, bike. cycling. Yeah. And so their carbohydrate is at a ridiculous amount. And a lot of them were coming back with, uh, high a1c's in the in this in the i guess the number was uh like six point something so 6.1 6.2 which would trigger a doctor but they also did tests uh alongside of that with the uh insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. and the insulin sensitivity showed that they did very little work to make it burn through so the kid, everything was functioning correctly. The number was high because of the fact that it's the accumulation mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of the, the diet they're doing. What, right. what, how does, how do we, how do we straighten this out? How do you explain this to me? I don't know. I mean, usually when you have high, when you have a hemoglobin A1C of like a 6.2 per se or 6.3, yeah. 
Like I said, that's diabetic, that's diabetes type two. I mean, when you look at the scale, that's what it shows. You know, as far as, you know, them burning through it, I mean, that could be a whole different story, right? I mean, they could be drinking a whole bunch of sugar and riding. I mean, they can just keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. So, I mean, as far as that goes, I, I really don't have an answer for it. I mean, at that point, you know, if you're an athlete and you're burning off, that's another thing. I mean, look at those guys. Yeah. They're not overweight and obese. Right. You know, they're right. not. Is there other factors on the blood markers that would show you, uh, is there other aspects of what's going on in there? Or is, is the A1C one of those that it sits by itself and it's I mean, one of the markers you want to make sure it's like the, the PSA. Yeah. I mean, you can look at, you can look at a fasting glucose if they didn't eat that day and look okay. at that sugar level and say, listen, they're normal on this day. Maybe the accumulation of what they've been eating over the last three months and why, why it's high, Okay. you know, because that's what it is. I mean, you know, so, I mean, that's, that, that's just an average. And like I said, that can change every 90 days. Right. So, you know, if you're previous and you were at 6.2 and you're riding, and you weren't drinking any sugar for the next 30 to 60 days, it might change on the next 90. So I really don't know. I mean, you know, there's a cyclist study, there's interesting studies because obviously it, it's the accumulation again of, of the carbohydrates, but it's also not just the accumulation, but it's also how your body uses the carbohydrates. Right. right. Um, and so, I mean, you're going to burn through, I mean, especially timing, you know that. I mean, you know, when they're hitting these carbs and I mean, they're hitting it probably timing. They got something that's overwatching this guaranteed. And, you know, they're pushing through like that. So, I mean, it's a long race. You got to power through. And the only thing I can say is, is that mm, I've seen some of the carbohydrates guys where they've been doing this. Obviously, back in the day, you used to shoot like EPO and like all these different things, testosterone, all these different things like Lance and all them. But what I've seen is that there, there are a couple of cyclists and I'll have to pull their name down because your body can burn two different ways, right? Your body can burn off carbohydrates, or if you delete carbohydrates, it'll burn off fats in your body. It'll start using, utilizing the fats. So I've seen one cyclist do it like that. And usually, like we were talking about, cyclists are really small. There's a new cyclist that just hit the scene, and he's jacked. Wow. He's supposed to be He's supposed to be a bad boy. So I don't really follow cycling, but I'm going to look into this guy because, I mean, he was, he was substantially bigger than all those other racers, like substantially. Legs. The whole nine, body, arms. I mean, I was like, holy cow. I was like, this guy's a cyclist? Like, man. Psh. So I want to see what he does against those smaller guys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're obviously burning for the, for that energy and the sugar. So, I mean, I don't know. Carbohydrates, obviously, listen, depending on what kind of carbohydrates, too, we're talking about. Complex, are we talking about? Are we talking about, you know, sugary carbohydrates? I mean, I don't know. That, that could, that's yeah. different, too. Just like I talk to guys, I'm like, hey, listen, let, let me chew gummy bears after the gym because, you know, it's shuttling the nutrients, you know, the, the dextrose or whatever the hell it is. I'm like, right, right. Yeah. I, I think I'd rather have something else, like some fruit or something. But makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's studies. You were just talking about the 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 equivalent of some athletes go to that. And again, I don't think there's anybody on here that's doing six hours of cardio every day at that intensity. So no, so it was just a curiosity question to me. Um, with all this stuff that I'm trying to read and understand as we continue to learn and go through this process. Um, yeah. Is there, uh, uh, what do we got here, Jeffrey? We got a couple on here. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the donation for the puppies. Yeah, that's awesome. One out here says my assumption of those cyclists do not have enough muscle. Some that, Sugar stays floating over time and accumulates, producing insulin resistance. So I guess it could, but I mean, really, you know, muscle mass, I mean, to a certain extent, I mean, if they're having a lot of carbs, they're still going to have a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar in their blood. Yeah, the, the, just so you know, James, James, the study was that all these guys were healthy because uh, it showed with their other tests besides the A1C. The A1C was showing that they're all high carbohydrates. Extreme, extreme. I would like to see their, fa their fasting glucose, though, too, as well. They should have had that right along with it. I think it's like I when we, we test that. something like that every time it's in a CMP. So it's, it's a pretty common test. Yeah. So they were healthy. So even though the number was in a, in a, in a strange place, but again, we're talking about elite, elite athletes that were eating uh, an outrageous amount of carbohydrates that I would never need to do. So that's what it was. Um, do you have any grams they were taking? Did, did you, did, did you 600, see 600 a day? Whew, that's a lot of, that's a lot of carbs. Huh? Yeah. And what's your, what's your high day of carbs? Me, I try on, a, again, attempt. Um, I try to get about 600, wow. at least five to 600 on, on a high day. Okay. 
Yeah. I think I'm like three, four. You with those cookies? cookies? <laughs> or, or French fries. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the I mean, rice is, is the other carb, and then the, like you know, like a baked potato or something like that. But I, I definitely don't get in. Definitely not five hundred or six hundred carbs. I couldn't do it. There's no way, unless I was eating a whole bunch of cookies. I could probably do it then. Those cookies are so. <laughs> uh, is there a therapy uh, recommendation for bad rotator? Uh, yes. So, um, there is a BPC type peptide that we have. And then TB500, obviously, these are going to be great for that. Um, great for the rotator. It's going to help with inflammation in the body. And if you have some tears, hopefully help heal those tears or make those tears a lot better. Um, so that's definitely the way to go as far as any bad rotator cuff problems that you may have. Yeah, that's a, that's a get to it right away. Yes. Uh, and the one thing that you were saying was uh, it's a new BP, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's it's... So BBC is a certain type of peptide, and this is that peptide. They've, they've had to do a name switcheroo so they can get around the powers that be. So I'm like, I'm fine with it. I've been taking it. Works just as good for me. I have, I have a lot of patients on it that have been taking it. Great, great results. So I'm happy with it. Like I said, I try everything way before everybody else does. So at that point, if I don't think it's going to pass or it doesn't help me, it ain't going through tight, and that's for damn sure. Most of the guys I talk to now, um, we're off to karate combat this week. Oh, nice. Uh, and just talking to the athletes, uh, these guys are consistently doing the TB and the BP. Um, just they're so banged up, all the kicking and, and, and smacking. So they're they're heavy onto that. Um, yeah. So for you guys that are the weekend warriors, just know that that's what these guys are doing to try to stay healthy so they can fight. Absolutely. Because they're never going into a fight perfect. Nope. Definitely not. Dodge Boss said, do you tan in sunbeds or spray tan? Do you believe there are benefits to sunbeds and health? Ooh, Johnny, I know red light therapy is uh, extremely beneficial. Red light therapy is for sure. Tanning in sunbeds, not so much. Um, I tan outside, so I don't tan any sunbeds. I've, never, I, I've been spray tanned one time in my whole life um so otherwise i go outside and just try to get it naturally that's what i do on vacation i try to just stay in the sun and you know when you have i don't know i don't, I don't know if you, you have this problem but like i mean you're usually spray tan all, all perfect i'm, I'm tan like for, week. you did you once did in a lifetime i do it once a week <laughs> dude for me i have to like go out there and like i'll be in the sun and if i just stay in the sun like this then like all oh, this is white all oh, this is white. Like you can tell, like I'm still whiter here than I am here, right? So I gotta hold my hands up like this. These people think I'm all weird. Like I'm just standing trying to get the sunlight, but trying to get covered. But yeah, I like I like the natural sun. I used to go into sun tanning beds probably like 13 years ago, 14 years ago. I had a little bit of acne on the back I was breaking out from and stuff like that. So I went and tried to dry it up and stuff like that, but after that, I, I never went anymore because uh, I heard of all the cancer problems and skin yeah. and all this. And I was like, I live in Florida. I was like, hey, listen, if I'm going to catch cancer, I might as well catch it from the real sun. So you know, as far as yeah. that goes. I, spray I tan, though. I mean, I know a lot of people that do it. So at that point, like, I don't think there's anything unhealthy about spray tanning or anything like that. There's no toxic chemicals or anything like that, right? For me, uh, yeah. when it comes to any kind of sun, uh, I just check to make sure that your family genetics and stuff. Uh, we, we have cancer. Yeah. I'm Irish Scottish German, so yep. we have cancer in, in our family. So that's one yep. thing. I'm a vampire. I, I go without sun. Yep. Um, my recommendation to anybody, just be careful of the sun. Um, you know, John's pigment in Greek uh, yep. is a much better. Um, it's a little different. Of, of yeah. Them, so. Definitely know, definitely know your skin. Skin skin type and your family history absolutely i definitely agree with that for sure what do you got there which would 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 like your opinion ashawanga so i've got my opinion on this for sure Yeah, you do for sure so i've never used this supplement ever in my life never a lot of people i know have used this supplement a lot right and I've never really seen any studies of, uh, of this as far as, you know, I know they said like it raises free testosterone and such, yep. but I never really seen any negative side effects from this drug ever. 
So my son comes at me like a year ago and says, Hey, listen, you know, he's already tall and you know, all that. I want to get him taller. My buddy's taking these height gummies. I want to take these height gummies. So I'm like, all right, man. I'm like, let me look at the back of it. Let me see what's in this. So look at the back of it. There's like nothing in there. Ashwango was the only thing in there that I was like, I really don't know how this is going to affect you. Like all the ones, it's like vitamins, amino acids. There wasn't anything, nothing in there that I didn't know. I was like, all right, cool. This is actually, this ain't too bad for you. It might be a little healthy for you. Yeah, take it. So I started taking it and, you know, everything was going for months and months and months. And Peter just wasn't himself. I don't know what the hell, you know, you just feel it, you know, like what's going on. And of course they went, Oh, nothing's wrong. I'm fine. I'm like, okay. All right. So for me, luckily I can blood test Peter and I can run any blood test I want on him. So I usually run blood tests on him. So I was like, Hey, listen, you're going to come in for a blood test. I want to see where everything's at. I want to see where testosterone was at. I want to see where estrogen's at. You'd be a little girl, a little bitch. I was like, let me see. So <laughs> we pull, pull the blood and I noticed one thing on there big time. I was, his cortisol was low. Low. And we, I've tested it before. Never came back low. And usually cortisol, like really high stress, it's going to be high. Yeah. So when it's really low, you know, I start looking into it. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, if you have low cortisol, this is like you're high risk for depression, like all these different things. And I'm like, man, I wonder if this is affecting Peter. And like, it was low. I was like, all right, he's coming off the gummies. Went off the gummies, retested, like what, 30 to 45 days later, he's fine. Back to where it needs to be. And he's fine. He's the old Peter. So I'm like, damn, I was like, this really was affecting him. And this is an over supplement that they're advertising to kids, right? And kids are taking these. And is this causing depression in kids? Because depression is at its highest level for children, right? Highest level of suicide rates ever in children right now. So when we look at that, I'm like, man, I'm like, could this be causing negative effects? And are there other over-the-counter medications that are causing negative effects to people that people don't even know because they can't run the blood test and even see. That's my thing. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with Johnny on that. Uh, it's from what I've heard. It's great. Uh, I've taken it. Um, I got a bump uh, of using it, um, but I haven't used it in the last uh, three months. So uh, since the April trip. So, yeah. Um, you can try it, try it and see what you're doing, but like, listen to what Johnny said that, you know, what he saw. Um, and then I would try it and listen, yeah. I would look at it like blood test. Say, listen, go on the supplement for 30, 60 days, Blood test this cortisol with us. It's $30 test. You can see, Hey, listen, just raise my cortisol, lower my cortisol. You can run a free and total in there. What I would do if this were me, if this were me. And I didn't own tight medical center. I'd call tighten up and I say, listen, I want to run a free and total testosterone test and a cortisol test. I would probably run a full and death test, but for somebody out there that might be on a budget, I'd run a free and total and I'd run a cortisol. Take the supplement for 30, 60, 90 days. At that point, run a free and total and run a cortisol again. When you look at those numbers, you can see exactly where they reflect and what has went up and what has went down. If your free testosterone went up, great. If your cortisol stay the same and it's in balance, great. But if your cortisol went down, then you know, hey, listen, this was affecting my cortisol in a negative way. You don't want to do that. Somebody asked on here, um, you know, what's better, uh, low or high cortisol is bad. High cortisol is bad, but low cortisol is bad too as well. That's what we're talking about, always being in balance to where you need to be. You know, it's not about overdoing it or going less than. It's about having that harmonic balance. I'm keeping track on this one uh, as well because of the fact that, uh, again, Guys, this is the research man over there. I'm I'm the guy that's just really reading and trying to understand this. Mm -hmm. um, if if my tests come back continuously on on the moderately on the lower side, um, I'll keep an eye on it and see what's going on. But there might be a reason that I was just a bit of a research was that reason why I can retain a lot of the muscle I have. But then Johnny's talking about the other effects, like everything that, you know, low testosterone, what does it do to you? Well, it's now there's so much negativity to this. So I just got to keep an eye on that for me. So that's so everything that we're talking about is you can do this. And I don't know why everybody doesn't. I keep track of this for myself. I don't rely just on what the doctor says. Right. You know, so 
you know, is the ashwagandha working for me? Did I get stronger? Did I right. notice uh, maybe a little bit more intensity in the gym? It's mm -hmm. Big Johnny. What's up, Titan? Oh, if you look at him, what's going on? <laughs> Show him the muscle. Pull the sleeve. Yeah, it, 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 Let's see those guns, Titan. Hit that arm. Hit it. Let's see it. All right. Oh, he's pulling yeah. oh, pull them both out. He ain't just. <laughs> Woo! Double gun yeah. salute. I like that. Two gun, baby. Yeah. Unveiled it. <laughs> 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 Wow. Yes. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Jump back on that after that. Um, <laughs> take notes. James, James, I know you're a bright cat and you really try to follow along on a lot of the blood work stuff. Find yeah. out for yourself what's going on and then find out those signals like Johnny was talking about. If, sure. if you got low T, uh, are you depressed? Are you doing all these things? And then the secondary low things maybe that you don't feel it right now but what's this going to do to you if you're low t in 20 years right it stayed there the whole time it's the same thing he said about the a1c okay great you know this study talks about these bikers at six two you know points so it's like whoa yeah, yeah. and then the doctor says to him don't worry about it because you're you're uh fancy you your your sensitivity and all mm -hmm. this is great, and your mm -hmm. mind burns it off with no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then you're just taking his word for it that the, 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 the damage is not being done when it's right. being done. Right. So, you know, cholesterol in the arteries isn't that bad, but after 20 years, it sure is. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Blockage and stuff. So, take in consideration what you feel today and then down the road. So, that's just that's my, my thought. That's good advice. For sure. It's all about being preventative, guys. And we say this over and over and over. Don't let things break down. Try to fix them before they break down or take care of them before they break down. And, do and the only way you can do that is knowing the information and knowledge about what's going on to make an educated decision about what you want to do. So it's real It's real simple and easy as far as that goes. But you got to take the action for yourself. There's nobody's going to take the action for you unless you have a you know, a, a great wife or, or kid that's that's pushing you to do these things. But you want to, you should want to do them yourself. I mean, we only have one life to live. We say this all the time. And at that point, you got to take advantage of this life and, and, and utilize it and and do all the possible great things you possibly can for yourself and, and for the world, I guess. Back That's what I'm to trying the to do. Asta, Asta Ashawanga. Uh, the photo, I don't know if the photo was actually you, uh, sir, that was in, that was asking the question, but you, you um, were a little, you're not 20, put it that way. And so maybe you're at the stage right now where you shouldn't be looking for over the counter. You should get the blood test and find out where your T's are. Because if they are low, then talk to John and the team right. and get on something. And that way you don't have to take the vitamins to risk that stuff. And you just make right. sure that you're healthy and your T levels in the right position. So again, analyze it, get the blood work and stop doing a guessing game is another right. one. Yeah, it makes no is. sense. No sense to do that, especially when you can find out and know for sure. Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> we just did that to a couple uh, mid thirty year olds that we're talking yeah. about. That's the gentleman. Um, again, my eyesight's bad. You might be twenty one. I'm. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm just saying that I'd get your blood work done because that's. I, I'm assuming that you're doing that maybe for a combination of strength and, and muscularity and and. A little something in the bedroom, maybe, but uh, tight medical to take care of that real easy. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> easy peasy, baby. Get you dialed in and optimized. Uh, somebody asked about multivitamins. Yeah. Is it okay to take iron every day? Oh, iron. So Centrum has like iron in it, but it's at a daily dose. You want to look at those different things and you don't want to take a whole bunch of iron if you don't need it. If you take it in a centrum or a daily vitamin, it's usually a daily dose and you're not going to build up too much in the blood, but too much iron could be a, a negative effect and too low of iron obviously can cause a negative effect and be, you can become anemic and stuff like that. So you want to make sure you're looking good on that. Obviously other things too, like potassium, electrolytes, these different things like that. So if you're taking 
supplementations from these things, you might not want to, you shouldn't have to in most cases. But um, if you have health issues and stuff like that, sometimes it's a supplement. So it's something to look at because too high potassium can put you into a stroke. So if you have too high potassium, it's no good. And, uh, you know, I knew about electrolytes and all that. But listen, after my dad goes through it, I really researched the hell out of it because I want to know every little thing about what's going on. Um, so, yeah. So it's just something to look at. Obviously, listen, look at your blood work. And if you find things in your blood work, you can find early detections. <laughs> it's simple, simple to do. You're as simple as that, Johnny. And Johnny just said it. You say, get your blood work because there's iron in meat. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you might be getting enough yeah. just the way you're eating and the way you're you're doing your stuff. Um, right. And the way to find that out is do your blood work, ask for uh, some extra breakdowns on something like that that concerns you that you right. may not be taking enough. Blood work. That's what I'm saying. Even on the full of that blood test, this is a common test, iron. You'll, you'll see what it is. And then if we really find an iron problem, we have a very advanced test that we can really break down. So, you know, we have a solution for these, these problems or issues or that you want to check just to make sure, you know, that you're okay. Right. If you are, and if you're taking new supplementation of anything, you want to see how it's affecting the body, whether it's affecting kidneys, it's affecting liver absorption rates. Like we talk about branch chain amino acids or any amino acids for that case, vitamins, like all these different things. We can run blood testing on to see what's going on and see if it's affecting you negatively or positive, positively. I mean, a lot of things will affect you positively too, as well. I agree with you. Jeffrey, what do we got? A little bit more, please. Something on ice, uh, it's basically thoughts okay. on ice on cold plunges. Right here. Uh, cold plunges. He has some legit, how does it impact the plunge? Cold what? plunge. Yeah. Um, do either of you cold plunge? Is it BS or legit? How does it impact your heart? Thanks. I don't. I, know I'll be that. honest with you. I've cold plunged one time, and that's it. I'm more into the red light saunas, massage, things like that. I've been reading a lot of studies on cold plunges. A lot of good information on cold plunges. There are some benefits to what they're saying. I want to see these proven. More, more data on these things. But they say from a number of different things like improving immunity, taking away inflammation in the body, you know, improving cognitive function, like just across the board. Like there's all these, and I don't want to call them outlandish things that they're they're saying this is going to do because this is proven. If this was a drug, I couldn't go out here and say, yeah, it's going to take away inflammation. That would be illegal. So, you know, can it help with these things? Possibly. The proven, don't know. I did read in one study they said where if it depends when you take the ice plunge or a cold plunge, if you take the cold plunge directly after training, which a lot of people think is really beneficial for them. I heard obviously it restricts you and it actually it could lessen your gains per se, I guess it, it, with the cold plunge like that. And they say, if you take it like the morning and go throughout your day, then you can start your day like that. I don't know. I'm not jumping a cold plunge every morning. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I took a cold showers to try it too because that was my buddy before cold plunge with a big thing like take a cold shower like 15 minutes in the cold shower I'm like 15 yeah. minutes I'm like dude I'm like dude there's no way I'm doing that I, I like hot that, showers you get a friend of yours <laughs> okay so he's just playing a joke on you brother that, yeah. that, that was, that was I'm like 15 cold. minutes I'm like there's no Everybody's way like, I wouldn't stay there for five <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that. Go take a 15 minute shower. You will gain a pound of muscle a month. Yeah. Congratulations, guys! Oh my god, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, cold punch they just stay in three minutes, I guess, right? One to three minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. like three to five. Uh, and again, I, I agree with you that they talk about first thing in the morning, um, the stimulation to it. Do not do it after a workout. Nope. You're taking. You're, Again, I, everybody cries about inflammation. Inflammation is great. Right. You want inflammation after that workout. You want right. that body to right. do that. And you want your body to fix it itself. And right. It that course. Right. Don't that down. But doing it in the first thing in the morning. Um, and then I know that you said, is it BS? Again, I think for anybody and everybody that's on here today, we're going to give you insight on what we do. John's going to give you some insight on, on yep. factual stuff, which HRT can do and help. Yep. Again, 
if you try it and you like it, it don't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what a study is. And I think yeah. the point that I made my last week's YouTube um, on, on, on the Generation Iron Show, I said, studies are great. It doesn't yep. matter what a study yep. says. Yep, yep. If you're going to train, you're going to train the way you want to train. And that's going right. to keep you consistent for a lifetime. So if right. it's not the rep range that they say scientifically proven, it right. doesn't matter. Right. So. Yeah, you know, I, I talked to somebody yesterday. I was in the gym, and uh, it's a for, former patient of ours. And she caught cancer once. She beat it. And she was telling us yesterday she caught the cancer again. So she caught the cancer again. You know, she, she obviously couldn't – she had to stop all her meds. She gained a lot of weight. She was really depressed. She told me, she said, the one thing that saved me was cold punches. She goes, I didn't believe it because she was telling me how good they were and I need to start them and everything. I said, so I was like, what would you do? She's like, every day, five days a week, I go over and I do a cold plunge. And I sit in there for three minutes. And I'm like, all right. She said, after a week of that, John, because I was, I was seriously depressed about this cancer coming back. She said, I'm a whole new person. She's like, I am not depressed anymore. She had a cold punch every day now. Um, she's like, I feel like on top of the world. She's like, I know I have this problem still I'm dealing with, but she's like, I'm I'm good. I'm like really good now. I'm like, I'm like, man, keep doing that shit. You know, I'm like, whatever is, especially cancer, man. Like, you know, every week, like I go in there, like I'm in the cancer center, and you know, you're sitting around all the other cancer patients, you know, and it's it it's you know, it's it's I don't know, it's it's but not the present. What she said after a week of it, I don't care if it's BS or not. She's freaking a different person. She's willing to be in the fight now. Yes. Instead of yes. giving up. And that's one of the biggest things about cancer. Is like yes. You get to a point where you go, are you going to keep fighting or are you going to give up now? Yep. It's so true. Good for that person. And, and, and great for her saying that. And I'm glad the guy asked the question about that. And I'm glad he asked it the way he did. Say, yeah. Is it real or is it BS? Yeah. It's BS if you like it and you continuously do it. All this stuff yeah. has yep. a benefit. Yep. Even if it's just a mental benefit to you doing stuff and getting your ass going. Right. Uh, yeah, if it helps, it helps. That's a huge thing. I don't know about I take ice baths and the only thing I know about them is they make me feel good. Great. Great. Yeah. yeah. Does, so I do red light sauna, cold punch. Love it. Makes me feel amazing. I don't know about anything else other than it makes me feel amazing. That's awesome. I love saunas. I love my sauna and I love my red light therapy. Yep. Now, the only yeah. thing, the one thing I, the sauna does drain me because I'll do it 20 or 30 minutes and, and my body releases water so quickly. Yeah. So that's the only thing because I'm dieting down and that's the only thing I, I love it so much, but at the same time, I should just use it for that dry out period and not all the time. So it's a right. give or take, but I love right. red light therapy um, and that stuff. It's yeah. I'm looking at buying a red light for the outside, like a three to five person or something like that. Like a red light sauna to put oh, outside. Talk yeah. For my, Talk I definitely, them. yeah, I definitely get one for sure. When we have is great, but it's only like two guys, my size. Yeah. Yeah. And for you, I know that, you know, photo shoot, you got Jeff yeah. over there, you got four girls in the yeah. sauce, but Jeff. Yeah, we you need know. a five person at least, yeah. man. It's, it's got to be a party in there. Unless they're small, Filipino, Asian, then you can get. I got them all shapes yeah. and sizes, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on fasting and off top? I don't know if that is, but I looked it up. And it's uh, a cellular response to stress that can help repair cells and reduce damage. So it's a therapy or what is it? No. Fast, there's studies that say when you fast, it triggers this happens. for your body cells to kind of repair and remove damage. So, so there's some great things about fasting. and, um, But what is the reason for it? If you're doing it for mental clarity, are you doing it? Because I know that the one thing it does is it does drop down your T levels. Right. Um, does raise your HD or IGF for a period yeah. of time for a moment, yeah. Yeah. but then that drops back too. Right. I worry about fasting is if you are going to say, this is how I'm going to lose weight. How you lose weight is how you have to stay losing weight. Right. Um, and right. so I just worry that, that the concept is, hey, I'm going to stop eating to lose weight. Right. I don't like that idea. Me neither. 
I don't like that either. You know, I, I've done the fasting. I've done the 12. I know you've done fasting. I've done fasting. But I do it, and just so you guys are hearing Johnny say that, I do it for the mental approach to see right. how absolute. I, I'm Irish, man. I love suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and, <laughs> and so I will do that just to see how strong I can be without food and, and in that level and see how well I can control myself. Yeah. That's it. That's yep. it. I don't yep. do it for any other reason. So just be smart. Johnny, what else I, do you got that? I, I've never done the 12 hour fast. I, I, I've done like, you know, I do like the six hour in the morning, like, like I'll wake up, like, you know, I won't eat till like maybe like one o'clock in the afternoon and then go from there to like eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night, like six, seven hours at a time. But I've never done the straight 12 hours or days or anything like that. I don't think I could survive like that. And then obviously, listen, if you're not getting enough protein in, you know, at, at that point you might start losing some muscle right along with losing the weight if you're not eating so that's one thing that i always take in consideration i'm like man i don't really want to get any smaller i want to tighten up obviously but you want your body to start doing that and we've talked about that before where your body's working like it should with the food and then the exercise comes into play and, and then helps out even more so you know at that point i think that's where you really want to get at you know manipulating the food and and if you got to fast a little bit that's fine but like mike said don't do it to lose weight. Cause if you do it to lose weight, you're going to have to continue on that path and you're not going to be able to fast forever. And at that point you might gain back a lot more bad weight than you, than you really wanted to, or even expected to. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And again, like a lot of the questions today, just understand if you want to do it, do it. Right. Um, if you like it, I'm happy for you. We're happy for you, but understand just the, the pros and cons to it. Um, and again, I, I hate for anybody to have to, like the biggest loser, how they just starved the person for 60 days and got in shape. Yep. Yep. Then they all got fat again. Yep. And, and, and even worse, because of the fact that they weren't in charge of the ship anymore, they changed how the body functions. Right. And for everybody that's here, and this is one thing we'll talk about next week, is that when you are in those great research talking about how the body utilizes carbohydrates when you're young and you're in your teens. And I think everybody here can remembers when you could eat pizza and ice cream and you'd be hyped and all that kind of stuff and you'd burn it off in two seconds. And then as you age, the body kind of shuts down a bit slowly over periods of, you know, through decades. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't respond to carbohydrates as well as it does when you're such a young pup. So just be smart about it. Get your tests, get your blood markers, find out where you're at because we can push this stuff off for a long time. And hopefully I've pushed it off for a little bit more, yeah. but still I, I do the blood work because I need to understand, can I still diet like I did when I was in my twenties? Right. Can I still use carbohydrates like that? Does my body not skip me? Does my body use carbohydrates like that? Um, and so those are the real key points. But like Johnny says, blood test, get it done. John, what do we got going on this week? Because I, I know that we have a pep sure. of the week. I want to, yeah. I want to, I don't want to get off without us telling everybody about it. Yeah. So the, the therapy of the week this week is tears of peptide. It's a weight loss GLP one and GIP medication. Uh, this is going to be great for anybody that's really trying to lose a good amount of weight out there. Um, it's been pretty safe. It has less nausea than semi-glutide. Um, it hits two points on the brain to help control hunger and regulate the body so you can lose weight. Instead of just one active ingredient that semi-glutide has. So it's it's really been a, a great therapy across the board for a, a number of different patients. Um, you know, guys, girls, you know, it really doesn't matter who you are. Um, this is really going to be a great one. If you're trying to lose five pounds, this is not the drug for you. If you're trying to lose, you know, 15, 20, 30 plus, you know, this is definitely going to be the, the, the way to go for sure, 100%. So that's, that's the peptide of the week, guys. $25 off if you guys order this week. And then also get your blood test in. Again, sure. uh, what is the blood numbers? 200 for the females. 200 for the male, excuse me, 225 for females and 150 for males with a discount. Okay. And then uh, is there anything that maybe um, they would want to do? Because I know that I did the amino acids. 
Um, mm -hmm. What would that be uh, additional to this? Because I know there's some guys on here that want to try that one. Sure. So if you want to do the Hercules, um, the Hercules, sorry. the blood work complete with the blood work with the additional uh, amino acid lineup testing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so you're talking about if it was a guy, it would be 350. It's $200 okay. um, extra. And that gives you a rundown of every amino acid in the body, non-essential and essential. So if you don't know the difference, essential means that you need to get it from an outside source. Non-essential means it's made and produced inside the body. So you don't have to look for it outside. So usually you have to supplement your amino acids from foods or some or other supplementation, whether it's oral supplementation, injectable or IV. Um, and at that point, you know, with these, we really want to talk about how important amino acids are because all peptides are sequence of amino acids, right? And they're the building blocks of protein. Everybody, building blocks of protein. So the more amino acids you have in your body, the more better off your body's going to be. And as you get older, you want to pick proteins that are higher in amino acids usually is what they say. So us guys that are older, more lean steaks because steaks has one of the best amino acid profiles that's out there. Chicken's one of the leanest uh, as far as that goes for protein and all that, but not as much amino acids as steak. So for me, I like to mix in both. I have some lean protein, you know, and, and then I'll have my, my steak, which has more amino acids. It has maybe a little, little fat in there, um, but not too much. So you know, that's the way to go. All right, guys. Make that happen. Rock and roll on that stuff. Just so you guys know that that's what I do when I test. Um, because I was shocked the first time Johnny had me do that. Yep. Because I do take a lot of supplements. I love my aminos. I love my just glutamine. I can name. Yeah. Them. I love it. I love it. And then I got the test back. And then I realized, even though I'm taking in a good portion for my body, I yep. can actually take in a little bit more, which helps me go, oh, yep. snakes. So I, I can up my, uh, my, my glutamine. I can up my yep. branch chains, my EAAs. And yep. so, and that's when I said, forget taking the powders. I'm going the injectable with the Hercules potion. Right. And the EAA stack. So that's it's also perfect. Titan medical. That's awesome. Yeah. Good stuff, guys. I'm telling you, amino acid injectable therapies, they're game changers for sure. A million percent. If you don't know what they are, call or text us. We'll be happy to fill you in, and I promise you will not be disappointed. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, Mike. Welcome I'll talk to you later, brother. Bye, guys.